and welcome back guys this is your Maya Sensei speaking today I'm going to show you guys how to make use of the multi cut tool and how we can change and tweak its settings to really be able to customize and make it more of a flexible tool in uh, to in any kind of situation so let's quickly have a look I'm going to jump to my polygon plane over here I'm going to hit control one just to isolate that and then we can jump into the mesh tools and go straight into the multi cut tool as we go into the option box we can see we've got quite a few options we can play with but before we do that let's just talk about the the, the most common features that is accessible straight away from from uh, the actual tool itself so once you go into the tool you see your icon changes into a cut tool like a little knife and it's got a little line through to it so if we click and drag anywhere in 3d space and we drag right across the model it will actually use that virtual line as a way to slice through the length of the model so this is very similar to the cut faces tool where we can actually choose you know some sort of an angle which will dash through the length of the model. We could also limit the way that the tool kind of cuts through the faces by only selecting specific parts of the mesh. And when we go into that multi-cut tool again, and we click and drag across that, it will respect the selection and only cut through that. So that's just one part of the, the multi-cut tool. Let's quickly go back, deselect that, go back into the tool, and just waiting for Maya to wake up there. Actually, go in here instead so it refreshes, and there we go. Cool. Again, I'm just gonna make sure. Sorry about that. I need to make sure we deselect all these components, make sure we're in object mode, and then jump back into it. Right. If we have the multi cut selected now, you will see that it has a uh, functionality where it automatically picks up along the surface where we want to cut and then so for instance if we start along the edge and we click on that it allows us to place an anchor point and then you can go through the length of the mesh wherever you want to go it will cut through faces go through edges and connect to components like vertices and so it's really acting more like the split polygon tool um, than your typical cut faces tool and you can just keep going at this as much as you like you also notice it has a little percentage slider that you can then utilize to kind of choose where you want to split this model if you want to cut it more or less 50 percent and the nice thing about this is you can always go back along that edge and then manipulate this component and slide it maybe to a new location if you want to update any of the existing points and it will show you that the, the white points that we click and drag is actually points that is along the actual face and not connected to one of the, the edges. And you'll see that the points that is along the edge is um, a blue and then the, the, the points that's along the vertex is then yellow. So if you want to have the ability to make sure that this snaps exactly to a specific 10% increment, we can actually hold down shift and that will give us 10% incremental snaps along that length of the edge. And if the edge was um, to, to be longer or stretched out, it will respect that and evenly divide that further. So once I press enter, it will then cut through the model and give you the result that we are looking at right here. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to go back. We also have the ability to make this multi-cut tool function like the insert edge loop tool. So if we hold down control, it now acts just like the insert edge loop tool where we can click anywhere along this length of the edge to then split and add more details. This will respect the quads and just keep going along that path all the way around the model. We can also customize this a little bit further if you want by if we hold down control and we hold down shift together with that, it will respect the incremental snaps once again. We can click and drag this, actually just control and shift click. That will just place it exactly where we want. And then let's remove some of these. End up to, with too many. 
Uh, we could also, if we want to split this exactly in the middle, we can hold down control and then middle mouse click, which will then place that loop in the dead center between the length of the edge or the, the components between that. So that's very, very useful. Now that we know the basics of how this multi-cut tool works, let's actually jump into our option box and let's address some of these. You will see that the snap percentage increment is set to 10 at the moment. So you can always change that if you want to have 1% increment. So we can, if you hold down just shift and we click and drag, you'll see we have very small increment percentages. And you can set that to 20, 30, 40, whatever you want. So that's quite useful. In general, I think the 10% is quite useful for the most part. Then the cut uh, slash insert edge loop tool will respect the smoothing angle based off the value we have here. So let's go back and remove that extra end that we inserted in previously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of these components. I'm just going to move them down. And then uh, let's see, grab some of these as well, bring that down or maybe yeah, down as well. And at the moment we have quite a sharp transition angle between these. In fact, I'm gonna really try and push this a little bit more so we can see that drastic angle change over there. So what's gonna happen now is if we utilize the multi-cut, and we use the smoothing angle, it will look at whether the, the angle between these edges are set to 180 degrees uh, for it to try and maintain the smoothness of the edge. Um, this is just a preview of how the normals are being calculated. So if we have a less of an angle, it will try and respect that and see if the edge transition between these are within uh, you know, 13 degrees of angle, and if it's not, it will make sure that edge is um, very sharp. Um, so that's basically what the smoothing angle does. We could then go ahead and also turn on the edge loop, or rather the edge flow functionality. And let me actually go into component mode so we can actually see what's, what's happening. If I'm gonna set this to edge flow and I click anywhere along this edge, it will look at this edge on this side as well as this one over here and then try and find an average roundness between that to respect the curvature of the model. And so that's very useful. We can also reduce the percentage of that and then change it uh, so it's not too high of, a, of an angle. If we reduce that to zero and we also apply that, it will just respect that it, you don't want to be pushing it out and that's very similar to as if we were to turn that off. We can then go and say use multi subdivisions which means if we now click anywhere along this loop it will then split five points across that loop if you want to have more points to be able to manipulate. In general I, I wouldn't recommend having that because if you have random floating vertices along the actual face it might cause some errors so then we have a slice tool this one is very very convenient it's quite a nice functionality uh, we can actually make use of the slice along a plane angle and then we have a y z z x and x y as an option to choose from so if we choose an angle uh, of one of these we can actually look at which angle it's going to be applying so y z is going to be up and inwards and it's going to split the model across that plane. So let's choose YZ. You can see it creates this virtual representation of a plane and we can actually move that wherever we want and we can even rotate that if we want and then when we press enter uh, it will cut through that. In fact if we just go and exit out of the tool, let's say go back to object mode, it will disappear and then leave the, the cut through that mesh based off of that angle. So it's very useful if you have very sharp specific angles going through a rounded corner or curvature and then you can use a plane to respect that profile going through it. So that's very very useful. I'm going to go back again into the, the multi-cut tool again and we can also go into the keyboard options we can look at some of these shortcuts if you want to address that for the most part i've already talked about most of these options 
and we also have the ability to change specific colors just like I said the edges with a blue the vertex with a yellow and faces with uh, white points the line in general is yellow so if you choose a different color you can customize it to your liking so I hope you guys liked this video please um, like and subscribe and don't forget to click on that little bell button inside uh, just underneath your subscribe if you guys um, want to see more just comment below ask me if you have any specific tools you want me to to talk about and I'll try and make a video hope you guys enjoyed it see you next time